Mark out mania. Mark out mania. Refuse and yell and refuse and yell and mark out mania. Hola amigos and welcome to Mark Out Mania! I'm Droke Pedro Boyd, a Texan Spaniard on Twitter and YouTube, and this is my podcast all about sharing my reviews on wrestling, sports, TV, and other stuff. First off, a little bit about myself. I am an artist working out of Texas. My mother was from Spain and my father is from Texas, so that is where the Texan Spaniard moniker came from. I have been a fan of pro wrestling basically all my life. My all-time favorite wrestler is Brett, the Hitman Hart. I prefer the WWF over the NWA as a kid, and I was at the Astrodome live in attendance for WrestleMania 17. I am spotlighting my wrestling fan credentials at the start because in this first episode we are going to be reviewing part one of Lucha Underground's Ultima Lucha. So hashtag Lucha Click in the house and representing. Let's do this. Lucha Underground, El Rey Network's Lucha Libre show, and very simply and honestly, the very best pro wrestling on TV, hands down, is capping off their first season with a two-week season finale they're calling Ultima Lucha. Part one is one hour long, and next week's part two is two hours long, which is fantastico for all those Lucha Underground fans. Ultima Lucha Part 1 kicks off with a recap highlighting the Cage Mac, Drago, Hernandez, and Trio's title feuds and storylines. Does a great job of hyping those three matches and had me giddy with anticipation for the matches to begin. But before we do that, we get a long-awaited update on Black Lotus. She's working out in her prison cell when Dario Cueto, the best evil boss in the history of pro wrestling, shows up in a tuxedo and drinking champagne to seemingly taunt his prisoner. Instead, we get El Jefe's version of the history of his brother Matanza, and then he throws major shade on Dragon Azteca, claiming he is the one who really murdered Black Lotus's parents, not Matanza. What? She proceeds to beat up the wall while El Jefe has a show to run, and I mark it out like a nut. I know the kung fu and horror elements to Lucha Underground Probably seems strange and out of place to many wrestling fans, but I think it is awesome, and I love this storyline, and I'm curious if this is the last we'll get for this season of this story, or will she make an escape somehow? I just want more! So kick-ass, dug the heck out of this. Sergio Raul rocking and Melissa Santos announcing can only mean one thing. Ultima Lucha is here! Matt Stryker and Vampiro are amped as they run down the show, and then they send it to Melissa Santos for the first match, which is Cage versus the Mac. Falls count anywhere. And holy moly, ravioli, what a crazy wild match. Cage attacks Mac as he's walking out at the top of the stairs, and it is just a wild brawl all through the crowd in the temple from that point on. So many crazy spots in this match. A uh, spear through a door by the Mac, exploder suplex onto the bleachers by the Mac, power bomb through a table by the Mac, superplex off a railing onto the top of Dario's office by Cage, Mac drinking beer, then hitting a stone cold stunner, which made me leap out of my seat and jump around like a lunatic. Oh, so much insane crazy stuff, and then that finish, dear God, Cage curb stomped Mac through a cinder block. You know, I know I know it's gimmick, but at that moment, I suspended all disbelief and was like, Oh no, he's killed him! Oh, they had me! So much fun. What an awesome brawl to kick off Ultima Lucha. So kick-ass. After commercials, Matt and Vampiro run down next week's two-hour finale to Ultima Lucha. And that's going to be so off-the-hook awesome. But next up in this show is the Trios title match. Lucha Underground Trios title match champions Son of Havoc, Ivalice, and Angelico versus the Disciples of Death. Tornado rules! And Yowza, I was so into this match and so into like the storylines and invested in the characters involved. But to be completely honest, this was not really a good match. But it was a lot of fun. The new gear for the Disciples of Death was pretty outstanding. Some great masks that help us to tell them apart from one another. The stuff with Katrina raising the stone up in the air and it giving them like renewed life 
after an helico had killed himself to wipe them out on the floor was an awesome like comic book kind of logic that I really marked out for. I won't lie, I was totally rooting for Team Havoc here, but they seemed doomed from the start. They had their moments though, including the before mentioned on Helico spot. Also, Son of Havoc hitting one suicide dive, scrambling back in the ring and hitting another on the other side. That was pretty boss. But my favorite moment was when Ivelisse went after Katrina. Holy moly, I was marking out like a kid for that. Of course, then Katrina KO'd her with the stone and that was that for their title reign but man this was a lot of fun and it makes me want to see team havoc get on the same page and come back in season two and get the belts back they got a a lot of fun even if it wasn't a good match it was fun pro wrestling matt and vampiro share a toast for the season before the next match believers backlash match drago versus hernandez this was nuts so the idea behind this match is that a select group of fans get to have leather straps outside the ring. When the competitors go outside the ring, the fans can hit them with the straps if they so desired. And of course, the competitors can hit them back because they signed waivers. They made a big deal about that. And man, it was hilarious because when Drago would be outside, fans weren't ever going to touch him. But when it was Hernandez, oh sweet googly moogly, the fans lit him up with those straps. They left so many welts and red marks all over Hernandez. That was insane. I love the spot when uh, Hernandez went for the suicide dive and Drago sprayed him with the mist. Pshhh. Holy moly. Uh, then the fans mobbing uh, quote-unquote baby nuts with the strap shots. Uh, Drago showing off his nunchuck skills. Shoosh, 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 shoosh. And then the splash through the table. Whoa. So much fun. Just tons of fun stuff in this match. Uh, that was just a lot of fun. Even though I'm not a fan of Hernandez, I did feel bad due to how beat up he was by the fans. That had to hurt. This was a ton of fun. We get one more hard sell for next week's two-hour finale, which is safe to say anyone who's been following Lucha Underground is way beyond sold on all of this because it's freaking awesome. And then we get Dragon Azteca marching to the temple. A mystery protege of his tries to stop him and offers to communicate to Puma or to go himself to save Black Lotus, but Dragon Azteca insists he has to go. He is warned about the prophecy, how it says he will die if he ever goes to the temple, and he says he may die, but Dragon Azteca will live forever. And then he goes in the doors, and the doors close behind him. What? Holy moly, ravioli mind explosions. What is going to happen? Are they really going to kill? Dragon Azteca? Oh my god. What a cliffhanger to make us lose our minds over. Oh, hurry up next week. We have to see what happens. Man, like always, Lucha Underground is the best wrestling on TV, hands down. Bar none. They are totally delivering with Ultima Lucha so far, and I can't even imagine how insane next week's two-hour finale is going to be. I'll be back next week with thoughts on the two-hour finale, so hashtag Lucha Click, watch out for it. Muchas gracias for watching and listening to this. Hope you enjoyed it. On Twitter, you can follow me at Texan Spaniard, and I'm also on YouTube under the same handle, Texan Spaniard, where I put up a lot of the videos of my noise, aka music. I also have an art and noise Tumblr you can check out at pedroboy.tumblr.com. Thanks for checking this out again, and until next week, adios!